from KC24, your local election headquarters, with your host, Alexan Valakian. This is Sunday Morning Matters. And good Sunday morning to you. I am Alex Zambalaki, and the rundown is jam-packed today, including a new era in Clovis. Mayor Drew Bessinger in studio, and Fresno Bar serving booze until 4 in the morning. But we begin in Washington, as the Mueller report has consumed the headlines for an entire week. And that's not going to change anytime soon. Attorney General William Barr confirming the report will not be released to Congress or to the public for weeks. But Congress did send a letter to Barr stating they want to see the Mueller report no later than April 2nd. That's Tuesday. We now head to the Hill. We say hello to District 16 Congressman Jim Costa. Congressman, always great to have you here on Sunday Morning Matters. Well, Alex, on congratulations on your new uh, promotion, and it always is good to be on Sunday Morning Matters because it does. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, we have so much to talk about here, but, of course, let's start with your initial thoughts. When you first read William Barr's letter to Congress saying there was no collusion between the president and Russia and no evidence of obstruction of justice, your thoughts? Well, uh, I... Glad that uh, the perfunctory letter that the Attorney General provided us uh, was uh, submitted. Uh, but I think, uh, like um, all Americans, we want to read the report. Uh, clearly, uh, you know, the details that are contained in there, the 2,800 interviews, the uh, overwhelming amount of witnesses that, uh, and, and, and subpoenas that were issued, uh, give a level of detail. I'm pleased that uh, Mueller uh, determined that there was uh, apparently uh, no uh, involvement between the Trump campaign and Russia to uh, uh, collude in the elections. But clearly, as the um, uh, Barr letter indicated, there was not an, uh, an exoneration either. And so um, uh, this is part of a process. But I think uh, the good news is, is that uh, the Americans can feel confident with the Mueller report once we read it and we all have an ability to determine what's in it uh, and make our um, you know, uh, own judgments based upon uh, uh, a 450-page report. And, and Congressman, you guys over there uh, want to see that. Uh, by April 2nd, we were seeing reports that uh, Barr will not release uh, most of it or her, his version of it for some time, weeks, not months, but weeks. But April 2nd is a deadline that a lot of your uh, representatives over there, your colleagues, want to see this report. Word for word, is that what you want to see? Well, I want to see all of the, the report. Obviously, the grand jury testimony, uh, because it involves other cases that are pending, uh, will be withheld. And there will be redacted information that will be uh, appropriately uh, uh, not a part of the actual uh, report. Having said that, uh, whether it's April 2nd or several weeks, uh, the House voted 420 to 0 which is unanimous <laughs> to make the report public in its, all its detail with those provisions, with the exception of those provisions I stated. And so the sooner the better. And I, and I believe that uh, uh, and hope that Attorney General will move expeditiously. Will Democrats still pursue uh, avenues for impeachment here now that there has been this Mueller report saying there was no collusion, there was no evidence of obstruction of justice. Will, will colleagues of yours and, and even you, are you on board with finding avenues for impeachment down the road? Alex, I've indicated before that uh, what we need to be doing is focusing on reducing health care costs and reducing prescription drugs and putting together a bipartisan infrastructure package that reflects the needs of America. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, while some of my colleagues, some on the Democratic side, have talked about impeachment, uh, that has certainly not been uh, my focus. <clears throat> the facts uh, will fall where they may. And uh, I think that, frankly, uh, you know, ultimately the president's going to be judged uh, by uh, whether or not he's able to keep his promises uh, in the 2020 election. Uh, I think uh, an impeachment proceedings at this point in time would be divisive. 
And even if there were, and I don't believe there are, votes in the House to do that, that's simply an indictment. It takes two-thirds of the votes of the Senate to convict, and I don't believe that there are two-thirds uh, of the United States Senate that would do that. So why take the, our country through that kind of a, uh, a, a process? And I think the Speaker has uh, somewhat uh, echoed the sim similar mm -hmm. sentiments. So, yeah. I mean, you and the press like to keep bringing up the <laughs> issue of the impeachment, uh, and some of my colleagues on the Democratic side do too, but that doesn't reflect the majority of the House, I do not believe. Well, it's good to get clarification on that because there's a lot of reports out there, not so much from you, but so much from a lot of your colleagues, and that includes California Democrat and House Intelligence Committee Chair Adam Schiff. He is doubling down, saying there was collusion. Uh, do you agree with his tactics here, his rhetoric? Look, everybody on both sides has a lot of rhetoric, okay? But that's not my point in terms of representing the people of our valley. And uh, certainly the intelligence chairman can speak for himself. But uh, you asked me the question about impeachment. I answered the question. I have never spoken about the fact that uh, that, uh, that is... Uh, my, my highest priority because I always said that the Mueller report has to be completed and provided to the American public beginning with the Congress. We still don't have the report. We haven't read it. You're asking me to make comments on a report that I haven't read. And, and that was kind of the point that Schiff continues to double down here. Uh, you know, GOP leaders now demanding his resignation. You know, they say he's peddling a lie. I know he needs to speak for himself, but if you were sitting in a room with Adam Schiff, what would you tell him? I would tell him my views in terms of what I just stated to you, which is we've got to get the report, we've got to read it. You know, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that... Uh, We've got two years uh, w remaining in, with this uh, Congress and this, this administration, and we've got work to do on behalf of the American people. And, and really, just to kind of punctuate this, uh, Congressman, the Mueller report, did it backfire on Democrats here a little bit? Because President Trump, many pundits saying, the big I told you so moment has come. And, and could that lead to an even bigger victory now for President Trump in 2020? Your thoughts on that? Well, I, I don't know what you mean about backfire. I mean, this uh, proceeded uh, when a whole host of incidences took place. Six people uh, that were involved in uh, President Trump's campaign administration have been indicted and have pled guilty. We've had uh, over 18 individuals from Russia who will never get the chance to testify. Uh, it, this is a very exhaustive report. It was a very thorough report. Uh, in two years, it took less time than the four and a half years that the Star report did on President Clinton. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a, a, a good deal of back and forth and politics that are involved in this, to be sure. But having said that, there was justification by a Republican uh, FBI director uh, that uh, once uh, they designated that the special prosecutor ought to be employed. And it was the president who is now claiming the report as an exoneration of his uh, actions that was talking about this report being run uh, by uh, people with an agenda. Now he's claiming that these people with an agenda have exonerated him. I don't quite get that. That doesn't seem to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, I know that there's a lot to talk about. As always, we're going to get to a lot of those things. You know you are a big guest here on Sunday Morning Matters. We always appreciate your time, Congressman. Thank you so much.